Hello everybody, welcome along. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. My name is Benjamin Bloom and this is the Championship Transfer Update, episode number six. That means things are starting to move fairly quickly in terms of the transfer market. Remember, we're a little bit more condensed this year in terms of time um, and things are moving. And the reason I know that is one, because I'm on the sixth episode and two, because the fifth episode was only... Uh, just under two days ago. So as I say, things starting to move um, and what we're seeing is the desirable free agents all being um, swept up now by the championship clubs. A few loans being confirmed as well. More of the forward thinking clubs really assembling their squads and those that maybe not financially as well off are now kind of looking to see uh, they're going to work in behind these people who get the first choice, um, what they can do in terms of building, building up their squad. A fascinating time indeed. Let's go through the latest deals. As I always say here, we are going to talk here about completed deals that have gone through involving championship teams or are dearly departed in either direction. We will not be talking about rumours here. Please go to your dailymail.com or co.uk or whatever it is for those and... We go to our dearly departed first, a player that I'm sure all championship fans, well, although he did hit the ground a little bit easy at times, but uh, fair-minded championship fans would have enjoyed watching last season. Matis Pereira, that was a really good deal done by Slavin Bilic. Start of last season for Sporting, on loan with an option to buy at the end of the season, and they have now finally concluded the option. They were always going to do it, but Pereira... Uh, superb player, probably the standout number 10 in the championship last season there. Look, eight goals, 16 assists, operated all those three positions in the row off the front. But in the main, look, there 24 appearances as a 10, 10 assists, five goals there. Um, and what that goes to prove is what a good deal looks like in the championship now. That is exactly what a good deal looks like. Start of the season, I didn't know who that guy was. 24 years old, you do it as a loan so you don't bring that liability straight in. You make sure you get that um, option to buy at the end of the season. Um, obviously, we've seen the Leeds issues with Ben White. Um, you really want that option in as part of the deal. And if you go up, easy peasy. Spend your TV money on Pereira. If you don't, well, you might still want to take him because it's still a good deal at 8 million quid. But... Um, you know, if you're running out of parachute money like, say, West Brom would be and you you might need to move some stuff around, it gives you that option. Um, well done, West Brom. Good deal there. This looks like a good deal as well, doesn't it? Danny Ward back to Huddersfield Town. He's been there before. Um, Danny Ward is one of those guys who's like a kind of trusted championship striker. You think, oh, you take Danny Ward, he'll improve your striking options in the championship. Um, when you look through the actual kind of career path... He's not actually ever been that prolific. Um, you can see there, there was the previous time at Huddersfield. There, 10 goals in 13-14 at championship level. And then that would be, I think, under Neil Warnock at Rotherham. Um, 11 there. Uh, maybe Warnock had gone there. Someone fact check me on that. Off he goes to Cardiff, where Warnock was indeed. Yeah, so maybe I'm wrong about that. But um, I think a fairly safe pair of hands. There must be a reason, though, why... He couldn't get um, starts. Uh, you can see appearances high on there. Not a lot of those starts last season for Cardiff. Um, be interesting to see if he's the go-to guy for Carlos Corberon. Um, first sort of real um, big signing in for Huddersfield under Corberon there. So um, looks like a good one. A free as well. Um, you can't say fairer than that. Let's see if he gets the game time and he gets the goals. Um, Oliver Skip. Who invented the skip? Um, Norwich City have completed the season-long signing, loan signing of Oliver Skip from Spurs, a 19-year-old central midfielder, 23 senior appearances, which is decent Premier League, Champions League, FA Cup and Carabao Cup, known to Ben Godfrey, Todd Cantwell and Max Ahrens. Um, looks like more of a sitting central midfielder than a um, attacking central midfielder in terms of the three off the front that we've seen Daniel Farker play. So if he's going to be used, um, 
then it would be a little bit further back in the same way we expect Tom Tribal or Morris Leitner and Alex Tetty's done. Uh, Serenson's come in in those positions. We expect him to drop in there. Always difficult to tell with lone players, isn't it? Some of them really, really take to it, like, say, a Conor Gallagher or a... Oh God! What was the other Charlton guy on loan from West Ham? Someone tell me in the someone tell me in the comments in those central midfielders. Those two guys over at Charlton last year. Uh, but Norwich themselves will know from sort of Patrick Roberts last season that it doesn't always work out with loan players. Um, also, uh, Millwall have taken um, Troy Parrott, so a couple of Tottenham um, loanees down here in the Championship. We'll see if he gets in. But certainly, what number seven in at Norwich? They are very very busy. John Obi McKell, there he is, 33 years old, in at Stoke. Obviously, famed uh, career, brilliant career at Chelsea. Um, Nigeria star is the fourth summer signing, um, along with James Chester, Stephen Fletcher and Morgan Fox. Michael O'Neill definitely going for experience here. That seems to be his methodology of getting out of the championship. We'll see how um, John Obi is looking fitness-wise. He did have a little spell at Borough under Tony Pulis, didn't he? Um, he's a tricky one, John Obi McKell. Um, I remember Ray Wilkins saying it very well, that to the professional eye, um, they love uh, John Obi McKell because he's never out of position and he never gives the ball away. Fans don't notice those things. They don't notice simple passes being completed and they don't notice a player never being out of position in central midfield. But um, we'll see uh, what his role is. Um, but talking about a glittering career, look at that. Two Premier Leagues, three FA Cups, a League Cup, a Community Shield, a Champions League, a Europa League, a Turkish Cup, an Africa Cup of Nations and a bronze medal, medal in the Olympics. This guy is dripping with honours. So if he brings um, some of that experience into the Stoke dressing room, I'm sure Michael O'Neill will be very happy. There is Freddie Woodman who is returning to Swansea. That's another good signing. Look, Swansea had uh, some very good low knees in Conor Gallagher, uh, Woodman, Gway, and obviously Brewster. You'd imagine if they can bring any number of those back, they'll be very, very happy. Woodman played 43 appearances for the Swans last season in goal. That's great. That's a really good signing, isn't it? You get yourself a decent level goalkeeper. We saw Sheffield United get promoted with Dean Henderson uh, borrowed in on loan. Definitely an undervalued position, say the money ball style, data metric-y type teams. Um, and Woodman, known to the club, known to Steve Cooper, it just seems a complete no-brainer signing. That one is coming in for another loan. I don't know whether Newcastle would be interested in selling him at any point, but it seems to be working out for both parties thus far. And now, alongside Corey Smith, I keep saying, um, good recruitment at Swansea seems to bail the owners out there of ever investing any of the money. But thumbs up for me and a no-brainer. And there's another no-brainer. Luke Amos returns to QPR. He was on loan there all of last season and they've got him permanently now. Um, definitely championship level player, sitting midfielder, only 23, doesn't have to move far across London. Known to the club, knows what's going on there. Absolute no-brainer of a signing there. De depends what the fee is, but I'm sure QPR haven't overpaid in that regard. Look there, 26 starts there, mainly as a sitting midfielder. Can go a little bit further forward, but you'd expect him in a 4-2-3-1 system to be uh, a stopper, stroke, deep line, playmaker, number six sort of position. And that one gets my thumbs up as well. Oh my goodness, here's Ipswich Town. Um, obviously, we're looking at that from a Stoke City point of view. They've let Stephen Ward go out. He's going to go and fill the empty left back spot vacated by Loney Luke Garber at Ipswich Town off the books at Stoke. Another one out of Wigan and that's a good signing for Plymouth. I think, um, sorry I didn't remove that divorce lawyer advert. There we go. Um, I'm not looking for a divorce lawyer by the way. Um, but a good signing that. I've seen him play well for Brentford before and he was at Wigan. Hasn't managed to hold down a play. Surely he'll be one of the better central midfielders in League One for newly promoted Plymouth, good deal that, um, but another one off the books from the administrators at Wigan, Exodus. Um, Exodus is starting to happen at Birmingham as well, uh, Karanka clearing out his squad, that is Mechelen announcing Kareem Mrabti, um, who did get a few goes under um, Pep Clotet, um, was used as a second forward next to Jukovic a few times, but uh, Karanka does not fancy him, so out he goes from 
Birmingham. Uh, Rhys Brown has also got out from Huddersfield. He'd gone to Peterborough on loan last season, so they're continuing that deal. They don't feel like they need him in the first squad. And Corberon um, agrees with what the Cowleys did last season, and he rejoins Posh in League One. And that brings us to the end of this latest transfer update. Get your thoughts in on how the deal works. Are you the buying club? Are you the selling club? Do you support either? Are you a detached observer? Um, I always think three things, good deal for the buying club, good deal for the selling club, or good deal for the player. Good deal for all three is what we're hoping for. Um, but sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. Um, you can support the channel, as you can see up there, Patreon, the $3 tier and the $5 tier. I don't see any of that VAT. That all goes to uh, the government, I'm afraid. But So the $3 tier um, is just basically a donation to the channel. You're helping me out try and make my way as a football vlogger here. I'd love to do this full time. COVID took my job. They took our jobs. Um, COVID took my job. Um, and I'm trying to make a go of this. I do need your support. We've got a growing subscriber base on YouTube. Not enough to pay all my bills yet. So um, looking for support. So if you've enjoyed any of the videos, think about supporting. For $3, that's a donation. That's a pie at the football or a coffee once per month. For $5, you get my Patreon-only Q&As and vlogs over there. So a little bit extra bang for your buck. But know that you are supporting a fellow football lover in his quest to uh, make a living out of this. Wouldn't that be a fine thing? I'm putting in the legwork, but I do need your help. Um, and plenty of help. Look, there we are, 11,367 subscribers. Please hit subscribe if you are watching that video. It says 10,000 um, there, doesn't it? Uh, but we're up to 11,300. Um, we need to keep it growing, like I say, for me to um, stop asking too much of the Patreons. I know they're happy to support, but uh, the ad revenue and the Super Chats really help on YouTube. Uh, so hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you're on the video. Get your comments in about all of these transfers, buying club, selling club, player, how does it affect each? And I will bang my drum one more time. Please check some balances for people's online behavior. We're not getting it right, are we, as a society with our behavior? Online, I always say, um, it doesn't have to be a debate with a winner or a loser. It can be just a discussion, can't it, where people agree and disagree in a civil manner. I always say, don't be a jerk online. Treat people how you would, um, how you'd speak to them on the street or in the workplace or in a shop. Um, just be polite. Doesn't cost anything. And again, it takes a great deal more intellect, courage, etc to present your own ideology rather than tear somebody else's down. So if somebody gives an opinion, why not give your own rather than just telling them that they're some kind of moron or something that we see online. And I do feel, um, I know people think, shut up Ben, stop going on about this. I do feel it is my role as a creator to try and harbour an atmosphere of people behaving in a proper manner. I'm not talking about snowflakery and everyone pandering to each other. I'm just talking about not being a jerk. There is a grey area in the middle that I would love us all to live in. That is Transfer Update episode number six. Get your thoughts in. It looks like it's going to be every about 48 hours now as the Transfer Update amps up as we wait for that big cascade transfer. Maybe a parachute team's going to spend some of the big money that they draw in. Maybe a uh, a Buendia fee or maybe a Ramsdale or a Nathan Ake fee or a Saar fee from one of those um, uh, parachute clubs just relegated might facilitate a big sweep of money go through the championship. Certainly make things interesting. Right, thank you everybody for watching. Get involved in the comments. See you on the next video. Over and out.